The modern system of Babylon is a religious political economic power. The Book of Revelation describes a system of international spiritual darkness and confusion with tentacles that are far-reaching, even wrapping themselves around state economies. The term Babylon is derived from Babel, and signifies confusion. It is employed in scripture designating the various forms of false or apostate religion. In Revelation 17, Babylon is represented as a woman, a figure which is used in the Bible as the symbol of a church, a virtuous woman representing a pure church, a vile woman an apostate church. Babylon is further declared to be that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17 18 The power that for so many centuries maintained despotic sway over the monarchs of Christendom is Rome. The purple and scarlet color the gold and precious stones and pearls vividly picture the magnificence and more than kingly pomp affected by the haughty sea of Rome. And no other power could be so truly declared drunken with the blood of the saints as that church which has so cruelly persecuted the followers of Christ. Babylon is also charged with the sin of unlawful connection with the kings of the earth. As we near the closing of world history, we can see that the kings of the earth are looking to the Holy See for a religious political alliance. U.S. President George W. Bush has described the Pope as one of the greatest moral leaders of our time. Many other U.S. presidents have made strong connections with the Vatican as diplomatic relations were forged in 1984 by President Ronald Reagan and Pope John Paul II. Prophecy is actually unfolding in front of our eyes. Who would have thought that a country founded on Protestantism would fraternize with the Vatican on such a level? Many of the Protestant churches are following Rome's example of iniquitous connection with the kings of the earth. The state churches, by their relation to secular governments and other denominations by seeking the favor of the world. And the term Babylon? Confusion? may be appropriately applied to these bodies, all professing to derive their doctrines from the Bible, yet divided into almost innumerable sects, with widely conflicting creeds and theories. The Roman Catholic Church is said to be the mother of harlots, by her daughters must be symbolized churches that cling to her doctrines and traditions, and follow her example of sacrificing the truth and the approval of God in order to form an unlawful alliance with the world. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 17 verse 5. There are some Sunday-keeping churches today that call the Pope the Antichrist and expose all the infidelity of the papacy. Yet they keep her Sunday institution that is her mark of her self-proclaimed ecclesiastical authority. The fallen denominational churches are Babylon. Babylon has been fostering poisonous doctrines, the wine of error. This wine of error is made up of false doctrines, such as the natural immortality of the soul, the eternal torment of the wicked, the denial of the pre-existence of Christ prior to his birth in Bethlehem, and advocating and exalted the first day of the week above God's holy, sanctified day. Sunday keeping is a papal institution established by Roman Emperor Constantine in 321 AD. Christians kept the true Sabbath up until this time, but under fine, confiscation of property and under the sentence of death the fraudulent Sabbath was enacted. Still to this time many people think the seventh day of the week is Sunday when in fact it is Saturday. The Sabbath was founded in the creation, and God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Genesis 2-3 History from a biblical perspective indicates that the Ten Commandments, which included the Sabbath, were given to Israel, after they were delivered out of bondage in Egypt. God's people had failed to remember the divine precepts due to slavery. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Exodus 28 Symbolism for the following scripture. Wine represents false doctrine. Fornication represents unlawful relationship. A beast represents a kingdom, empire, 
political power or government. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Revelation 18.3 Here we see the connection between the merchants of the earth and Babylon. In some way the Vatican has entangled themselves around the earth's finances, industry and commerce and to a lesser extent the apostate Protestant churches who follow the papal institution of Sunday keeping have done the same. The Encyclopedia Judaica claims that the Rothschilds bear the title Guardians of the Vatican Treasury. We can only speculate how wealthy the Vatican truly is. Here are some interesting statements by Avro Manhattan. Some idea of the real estate and other forms of wealth controlled by the Catholic Church may be gathered by the remark of a member of the New York Catholic Conference, namely that his church probably ranks second only to the United States government in total annual purchase. Another statement, made by a nationally syndicated Catholic priest, perhaps is even more telling. The Catholic Church, he said, must be the biggest corporation in the United States. We have a branch office in every neighborhood. Our assets and real estate holdings must exceed those of Standard Oil, AT&T, and U.S. Steel combined. And our roster of dues-paying members must be second only to the tax rolls of the United States government. The Vatican has large investments with the Rothschilds of Britain, France and America, with the Hambrose Bank, with the Credit Suisse in London and Zurich. In the United States it has large investments with the Morgan Bank, the Chase Manhattan Bank, the First National Bank of New York, the Bankers Trust Company, and others. The Vatican has billions of shares in the most powerful international corporations such as Gulf Oil, Shell, General Motors, Bethlehem Steel, General Electric, International Business Machines, TWA, etc. The Catholic Church, once all her assets have been put together, is the most formidable stockbroker in the world. The Vatican, independently of each successive pope, has been increasingly orientated towards the U.S. The Wall Street Journal said that the Vatican's financial deals in the U.S. alone were so big that very often it sold or bought gold in lots of a million or more dollars at one time. The Roman Catholic Church is the most powerful organization on earth. Roman Catholic Church membership, both lay and clerical, in 2007 was estimated to be 1.147 billion people. The Vatican's vast intelligence service ensures both political and financial success, through its members who are obligated by sworn allegiance to the Pope. Often a conflict of interest arises between a Roman Catholic and whatever position he holds in state office, finance, industry. The Vatican is hell-bent on world domination, the Vatican has controlled the known world before and prophecy tells she will do it again. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Revelation 13.3 When Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion, for opposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution, then will the papal Sabbath be enforced by the combined authority of church and state. There will be a national apostasy, which will end only in national ruin. There will be a time when the United States economy will collapse and the world will be plunged into economic chaos which will have the most severe social consequences. Go to now, ye rich men, Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. James 5 verse 1 to 2. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. James 5 3 to 4. Here is the biblical illustration of the fall of Babylon, both religious and economic. God will bring judgment of the Vatican and economies will crumble. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city! For in one hour is thy judgment come, 
and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. And the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that was clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones, and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every ship master, and all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. Revelation 18.13, this verse tells us that in the last days there will be slaves who are bought and sold. Human trafficking is the illegal trade of human beings for the purposes of reproductive slavery, commercial sexual exploitation, forced labor, is a modern day form of slavery. The epidemic of modern slavery is the second largest criminal industry behind narcotics and before the illegal sales of weapons. Slavery is alive and well and there are many forms of slavery. The conveyance or trade of women, children and men from one area to another for the purposes of forcing them in conditions of slavery will increasing. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 18.2 And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, Revelation 14, 6-9. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.